Today we're talking about massage oil and I listed it as low chemical because everything that I'll be talking about, especially in the beginning of the video, will be both low in salicylate, a natural aspirin compound found in a lot of foods, plants, fragrances, and oils. And then also they will be low in amines. So if you're amine intolerant, uh, these should also be safe for you. We'll talk about which oils to avoid. We'll talk about which oil qualities, purchasing qualities you should avoid or what to look for on the bottle. And then we'll talk about two of my uh, personal stories. We'll probably bump those up a little bit early and why it matters about what you put on your skin. We'll talk about some qualities about, you know, whether they're slippery or if they absorb well into the skin or if they're good for makeup removal. And the last thing we'll talk about are other fats and moisturizers that you might be able to use. Uh, they might be uh, a little bit controversial or not tested, or they might be higher in amines, but they might be low in salicylates. And those might be other moisturizers you might want to use, especially uh, during the winter or dry months when your skin starts getting a little bit on the drier side. So stick with me to the end and we will get through this together. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. Thank you so much for visiting. Uh, this is Low Sal Life where we talk about salicylates and anything aspirin compound related. I found out I was salicylate sensitive about three and a half years ago and my world has changed. My skin is in better condition. My stomach problems have gone away. My dystonia, which is a crazy muscle disorder where I just twitch and spasm all the time, those have also gone into remission and I am just so much healthier. I started this channel so I could educate other people or at least build a community around salicylate uh, sensitivity and that people can share their stories, we can dig out good research so that we can live a happy and healthy life. So thanks so much for joining me. Today we're talking about massage oils. Once upon a time, <laughs> I had an anaphylactic reaction and it happened to be on a day that I had a massage. So I was in a lot of pain and I ended up going, uh, I went to, to, I was in college, I went to class that morning and I took one or two a leave, which is an NSAID, which uh, I don't take anymore uh, and should be avoided. I, so I took uh, two a leave in the morning. I got an emergency like impromptu massage appointment in, uh, right after class. So I went straight to that and I was able to actually fit in an hour and a half massage. I believe that the person, the massage therapist used Icy Hot that day, which is also, that contains methyl salicylate. So that is a very high, uh, high dose of aspirin that can be absorbed to the skin. They use their normal uh, massage oil, which has coconut oils and other oils in <laughs> mixed in there that are high in salicylate almond oil, there's another one. And then after that, I went and had some Chinese food with some spicy broccoli. And basically everything I just listed in there uh, is high in salicylates. And it's no wonder that while I was driving home that I actually had an anaphylactic reaction where my throat closed up and I got really sick and I, it was really hard for me to breathe. Fortunately, I had some Benadryl with me. I was able to chew a couple of them and make it to emergency treatment uh, and it was able to survive. So uh, just some things about massages and pain management that could be avoided if you know about salicylate sensitivity. I had no idea at the time. Later, I also had another situation where I went to a massage there. Uh, I went to an acupuncturist. I, I was recovering from a really bad car accident and I went to one acupuncture um, therapist for about a year and I never had any issues with uh, his acupuncture. Then I switched clinics and I got a new therapist and every time that I would leave her clinic, I would get sick. <laughs> And I would actually feel super, super bogged down, just super tired. And then I would also feel very nauseous. 
uh, those nights and the morning after, I would feel really, really sick to my stomach and I could not figure it out. I wasn't sure if they were uh, aggravating anything in my body or not, you know, like if that was part of the healing process. I just didn't know. I was just really tired. You know, they tell you to drink water and rest and so I just thought it was part of the process. But it always bothered me because I never felt that way during my with my former therapist and I did with this therapist. What I found out was uh, the second therapist was doing cupping and she would use uh, an oil on my back and it would, it, it had, it was high in salicylates. Not only did it have coconut and almond oils in it, but it was also laced with some willow bark extract. And if you know anything about salicylates, uh, salicin is a natural salicylate or aspirin that is extracted from willow bark. And that was the whole purpose of putting it in the mixture is to help relieve pain for the person. So I was getting sick every single time I'd go in for therapy. So after I became aware that I was salicylate sensitive, I kind of panicked a little bit about what we could do for some of my massages. And I actually had gone through about one or two years without any massages or acupuncture because I just always felt sick afterward. So after I found out about the salicylate sensitivity, I talked to a new massage therapist and she was really cool using the oil that I would bring and provide for her to use. And so that worked out great. So let's talk about the types of oils that are safe to use. Uh, these are all safe to eat. These are all low in salicylates and low in amines. And I'm just going to read off the list. Um, this is from uh, the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. This is called ARPA if you're new to the uh, new to the program. And these are they they do their reports by uh, both amines and salicylates. So I'm gonna read off of theirs. Uh, they don't actually. This is based off of their clinical research and. Their, what, how they treat patients and everything. But I also have a separate list that is just for salicylate sensitivity on my website. It's uh, losallife.com and you can check out the food list on there. And I actually will list all of the science experience, the research articles of people doing it from 1985 to 2017. That's what's up on the site currently. And you can go through and I will say if they have been tested, uh, if they haven't been tested or what maybe our palm might say. So you can check that out. That's a really good resource. There are things that are on the high list here that have never been tested. And there are things that people say that they have a reaction to that have actually tested low. And so it can be really confusing. But I do think that most of these for most people are really safe to use. So there are seven oils that are safe to use and that is cottonseed oil and canola oil, sunflower and safflower, soy oil, palm oil, and rice bran oil. So these, are, these aren't all the fats, but these are all the safe oils. Uh, I, out of all of those, I would say palm makes me the most worried because it doesn't specify if it's the palm oil, like the red fruited palm oil, which is like the purest version of palm oil. It doesn't say if it's the filtered uh, and deodorized bleached palm oil, which is like the mainstream stuff that's in everything. And it doesn't specify if it's palm kernel oil. So those three, uh, I would imagine that there's a lot of variation between those, especially the red palm oil the, that has color and it's from a fruit. I would say that that might be a high high in salicylates, but I don't know. I haven't tested it personally, and palm oil has never been tested uh, as far as a research test goes. All right, so those are the oils that are safe to use. The oils that are not recommended are anything that would be considered a good fat. So avocado oil, almond oil, uh, apricot oil, <laughs> those, those used to be some of my favorites to use for massage. Grape seed oil I used for a long time, and that, that one worked great for the skin. I really liked the way it absorbed, but you can't use that one. And uh, coconut oil. Coconut's really popular, but stay away from it. Then, of course, there is olive oil. Now, olive oil, according to the tribe of salicylate-sensitive people, and a recommendation by ARPA to avoid it. 
Uh, it has only been tested once in 2017 as negligible. It had no salicylates in it. I believe that maybe once upon a time when people were reacting to it, maybe that it had some antioxidants in it or something. So I'm not really sure what to tell you about that, but I have seen in forums where new salicylate folks might be coming into the community and they use olive oil on a regular basis and they're like, I never react to it. And people are like, oh my gosh, you can't use that stuff. And so it's very entertaining. The reality is, is it probably is low in salicylates, but the rest of us aren't brave enough to try it. So I'm just throwing it out there into the universe. I, I can only tell you what is found in research articles and what my experience is, and I'm not brave enough to try it. So uh, that that's the olive oil. Now that we've talked about what oils you can use, what oils you can't use, now we're gonna talk about qualities that you want to avoid or consider. Uh, I did have somebody ask me about the palm oil, which is why I kind of looked into it a little bit. And they say they react to it all the time. But there are different ways of processing oils. I would recommend that you look for, you know, the organic expeller pressed or just pressed virgin, whatever kind of pure oils you can find without chemicals, that would be ideal. Uh, canola oil, just mainstream canola oil and sunflower oils. They can use hexane in their the process, and so you know that's just an extra chemical. A lot of people say that hexane uh, is bad for you, and so you know stay away from it. Uh, as far as salicylate sensitivity goes, it it doesn't have any salicylates the hexane process. But you know if you're sensitive to salicylates, it, it's not too wild to think that you might be reactive to other chemicals. For palm oil and other oils, uh, they can be deodorized and bleached uh, and filtered. And so during that process, chemicals can be used. So in the palm oil, they said specifically bleached. So if you have an issue with chlorine, I know a lot of people say like bleached toilet paper or bleached flour that they might react to that, bleach chlorine pools, things like that. Those aren't salicylates, but some people might have many sensitivities. So that might be something you want to stay away from in oils. And then the last thing, you know, it's always just a good idea to try and find uh, non-GMO uh, items. For oils, good quality oils shouldn't have any preservatives in them, but sometimes they can. I know that sometimes the tallow or the lard that I might find, or like um, they might have like a BHT added to it, other oils might have antioxidants, so depending on where you are in the world, they might not even be listed, but I know in Australia they usually start with an E, and then in, in the United States they will list, list what it is. And even vitamin E can be considered an antioxidant. I know people that are allergic to vitamin E, so if you're reacting to an oil that might be safe, just kind of keep an eye on it and see if they put vitamin E in there uh, as an antioxidant. So just do your very best to find organic, expeller pressed if you can, and or cold pressed or you know some of those some of those uh, higher quality oils. Look for those without additives added. And the last thing of things to avoid. So our paw here says to avoid vegetable oil, and I think that it just really depends on where you are. In I believe, gosh, I don't remember where it was, but. Palm oil could be considered vegetable oil, and it wasn't until recently that palm oil had to be disclosed if it was part of the vegetable oil brand. Here in my town, I can go and pick up vegetable oil, and that's just, it's your cheapest oil you can buy on the shelf, but that is specifically 100% soy oil. They don't market it as soy oil, they just market it as vegetable oil. So you might be able to find soy oil as vegetable oil, but not all vegetable oils are soy oil only. It really depends on where you are. So keep an eye out for vegetable oil as being, it can include many things, including corn, which is another oil that you should avoid. When I go to the massage therapist, I will bring a glass bottle of my organic canola oil and she can put it in her little hip holster and it's really comfortable for her to use. So that is why I, I worked with her. Uh, and like I said, I talked to her before I brought this in and she was okay with um, using that. And I wanted to make sure, you know, she doesn't love canola oil because of the hexane and other, other reasons why people think that canola oil is evil. 
but she was uh, felt much better when I told her it was organic and that it was uh, expeller pressed. So uh, that worked out great for us. Uh, at home, I will use a little squirt bottle like this, and this one also has canola in it, but I will use this when I need to um, use, like I'll, I'll use it to take mascara off or eyeliner on my eyelids. And sometimes, uh, sometimes I'll use an eye makeup remover, but I always start with oil to cover my entire lid just to kind of create a barrier. And then I'll go through with an eye makeup remover uh, I haven't found a low salicylate one or a completely plant-free version, so that's why I will put oil on before uh, taking my makeup off like that. And then I'll wash my whole face after that to make sure I don't have any left over. I also use rice bran oil, and this one here, uh, personally, between the two, like I mentioned, I, I use canola with my uh, for my massages, my body massages. Uh, the reason why I like canola better is because it actually doesn't absorb into the skin very well and it creates a nice slick barrier. It doesn't dry up. And when you have an hour long massage, you want that slickness. So I, I really like the canola for massages. The rice bran oil is pretty nice. I, it does absorb into the skin really well. So I might use this more as a moisturizer on you know, like after I take off my makeup or maybe uh, a little bit in my hair, uh, I it doesn't have a slickness to it. So I highly recommend uh, canola. Uh, sunflower and safflower also kind of have that slickness too, but uh, rice bran oil does not. So I don't recommend this for a massage. Speaking of oil and massages, for a personal massage, let's say in the bedroom, uh, I do use canola. I <laughs> You know, nothing fancy in the bedroom or scented. So I just use canola oil. Uh, my husband and I, uh, that's, it works out great for us. So I do wanna say that if you are using condoms for a um, type of birth control, uh, do not use oil in the bedroom. It does break down the latex and your birth control won't work. So I just wanna put that out there. Just be careful, but if, uh, if you don't have to worry about that, have fun. The last couple things I uh, will talk about are fats and oils that can be used as moisturizers. So the one that I really like that's a little bit on the weird side, or two, uh, one is tallow and one is lard. Uh, one, lard is from, uh, from pigs or pork. Fat and then tallow can be from any animal fat. I personally prefer the beef tallow that is deodorized. Both of these are saturated fats. They're solid at room temperature and they make great moisturizers. I prefer the deodorized kind because I don't like smelling like steak personally. Uh, I tried rendering my own tallow from suet and that was kind of disgusting, but it was really good for cooking steak. But that's the reason I buy the deodorized kind, but you can just put it on your skin. It's really moisturizing. It takes a moment or two to soak in and it works great, especially on little fine lines, like on your, you know, as a, on, your, on your neck and chest. Another animal product, but is not from a dead animal, is lanolin. Lanolin is from the sheared wool of a sheep. Uh, it's a byproduct. Every strand of wool is covered with a little bit of lanolin, a little bit of sebum or grease, and that is uh, kind of boiled off, skimmed off when the wool is cleaned, and so they take that and make lubricant out of that. And it's really similar to Vaseline. You can also use Vaseline, but it actually works as an emollient, keeping moisture into your skin and it allowing, it, it makes really good um, moisturizer for your lips and it, really great uh, if you put it on your feet, put some socks on and sleep, sleep on them overnight. Uh, it'll soften up all the skin and make your skin very, very soft the next day. So that's the reason I like lanolin. Uh, shea butter is another moisturizer that is very lovely. Uh, I recommend getting the raw, but if you react to shea butter, you might want to try the deodorized and kind of more refined shea butter. Again, as things are more refined, they would have let fewer salicylates, but also there, you don't know what kind of chemicals are being used in the process to get to the refined products, so just something to think about. 
Uh, shea butter is also solid at room temperature, but it kind of melts in your hands and when it comes in contact with your skin and that works out really nicely. Um, I will mix shea butter with some soy oil and kind of stir it together and it kind of keeps it a little bit more liquid so that it's easier to put into my hair or on my skin. And you, just a little bit goes a really long way. Shea butter has never been tested and it's generally considered well tolerated. And the last one that is nice to use is cocoa butter. I personally like cocoa butter, but I don't love smelling like food. And so I don't really like using it anywhere on my face because it just smells like chocolate. And if I smell like chocolate, I feel like I smell like food and or I might get hungry. So I don't love cocoa butter, but it does smell really good and it is really nice. Similar to shea butter, it's solid at room temperature. Uh, you can mix it with other liquid oils so that it's a little bit more uh, creamy and easier to apply on the skin. That's all I've got for today. Find me on Instagram at Losal Life, and you can also contact me through my web form uh, at losallife.com slash about. And I love hearing from you guys. Write some comments down below. Let me know what you'd like a video on, you know, in future weeks, and I will see you next time.